Hello everyone and welcome to chapter 2 of creating the creature Zorak. In the first chapter, I went through my process of creating the creature in ZBrush and Maya and rendering the final work in Arnold Renderer. Let's pick up where we left off in chapter 1 and start texturing the character in Mari. Let's dive in. I started by importing the base mesh for the model. I have disabled all the channels except for the color channel. Typically, I prefer creating each channel individually within Mari. Then right clicked on the model and added a high resolution version decimated in ZBrush. Then I did the same thing for the suit. I added the base mesh, then imported the high resolution version as well. I prefer importing the body and the costume separately. This will prevent Mari scene from becoming too heavy to be handled by the graphics card and also will result in more organized notograph. I usually delete the default shader and start from scratch by using Arnold shader. And as a default values, I set the diffuse value to 0.5 and the roughness value roughly around 0.5. And these will be replaced by the maps I will paint later. Let's start creating our first channel, which is the color channel. I use ACCG. I will use the same color space and render time and it's going to be 4K map and 16 bit. And then connect it to the diffuse color in the Arnold shader and create a color node and set the color to 0.5 mid gray and connect it to the color channel. Depending on the light setup you like to use, I like to keep it as neutral as possible. So I have neutral studio light, which is an HDR map with Mari key light enabled. And most of the time I hit F1 to look at the color channel in a flat mode. Since flat mode gives you an accurate representation of the colors, I only switch to full shaded mode occasionally to have a look at the roughness and bump maps. Now let's start by baking mesh maps and I'll be utilizing the new bakery tool added to Mari recently. This is a new update from the foundry that allows you to bake your mesh maps inside Mari in almost no time compared to the previous version. Select the base mesh from the list on the left and select the high resolution from the list on the right. You can choose paint node. In this case, the end result will show up in the node graph directly. Or you can choose to bake to geo channel. In this option, the bakery will attach the maps to your mesh as channels which is a pretty handy feature. For this project, I will bake directly to the node graph by choosing Paint Node. So I'm changing the resolution to 4K and then I will bake all the maps to the node graph. I was very impressed by the baking speed considering I'm baking a couple of 4K maps. And usually after baking, I do a quick check to see if the maps looks good or if there are any artifacts. And in this case, they look very nice and clean. So I'll move on to the next step. Next, I will create a backdrop to contain the mesh maps in the node graph just to keep everything organized in the node graph. And every time I bake in Mari or import maps from ZBrush or XYZ, I will add them to this backdrop. So when my node graph grows to be a massive network later, I know where I can find my mesh maps. And speaking of organizing, I will do the same thing for the shader and also the channel. So every time I create a channel, I will add it to the channel's backdrop. And since I'm still working in the mesh maps backdrop, I will import the cavity map and the displacement map I generated in ZBrush and also the other maps I transferred using wrap 3 d Now I want to show you the teleport node, which allows you to broadcast any map or node in Mari and receive it at any backdrop or any stage within Mari. It's an amazing node that I use a lot, which helped me in declutter my node graph and keep it clean and organized. So I'll go ahead and add a teleport node to each of the maps I imported and set it to broadcast so I can receive them anywhere I want within Mari. Next, I created mask IDs, which will be very handy when isolating certain parts of the model. I create a lot of mask IDs in my workflow. It helps in painting and color grading without affecting the whole model. And usually I create the main ones first and then come back and add more when needed. And as usual, I contain them in one backdrop to keep them organized and clean. And similar to the mesh maps, I will add teleport broadcaster to receive them anywhere I want later. I created a backdrop for the skin with teleport broadcaster, then added a receiver for the color channel. This way, if the skin texture grows to be bigger, which it will, I can expand the backdrop and add as many nodes as I want and contain them in one main backdrop. And I'll do the same thing every time I create a new channel. Okay, now we've got the boring part of the setup out of the way. Let's start painting the skin. For any skin tone I paint, I usually use two to three colors from within the same skin tone as the base color of the character. And these are not shades of blue, red, or yellow, which I will add later. But these are the master colors that define whether the character's skin is human-like or blue or green. 
these what I call the master colors for the skin. As I keep adding more details to the model, I usually come back and I only play with the saturation and luminous values, and I rarely change the main colors. Now I'm adding the third skin tone for the base colors, and I just keep adding a new merge node and pipe the previous pane to the base board in the new merge node, and then use a color node to create the new color and pipe it to the over port in the new merge node. Then I add a black mask to hide the new color. Then set my brush to white and paint in the mask to show the new color where I want it on the model. And I keep switching to black color in my brush to paint out in the mask and keep switching brushes between soft, dirt, or cloud brushes with low intensity to control how much I want to show of the new color on the model. I use texture, projection, and production and personal work all the time, but for this kind of character and especially at this stage, I like to paint the skin and control the look creatively to achieve the desired look I have in mind. And also I wanted to show you my approach on how I paint the skin, should you decide to paint the skin for your own characters. Also developing the skill of painting the skin is a very nice skill to have. Many hero creatures in production will require painting the skin from scratch to match the concept you get from the art department or the client. And like DigiDoubles, and in some cases you don't always have texture maps to transfer from to match the creature's requirements. So it would be nice to have the skill to paint at least a good base to layer tile maps or texture projection. Also with this kind of setup, it would be easy to create color variations if a supervisor or a client asks for a different version. Simply we can change the colors in the main three nodes to whatever colors we want. So I've created the first pass for the skin tone and I will come back and tweak it later. Now it's time to start introducing different colors starting with the red orangish color and using the same workflow I will hide it with a black mask and starting from the lips I like to add the full color first then fade it with the brush with low opacity I should mention I have lots of skin references on my other monitor it is important to study and analyze different images when painting the skin color just like anything the more you study the images the more you paint the skin the more comfortable you feel with it the process starts to become easier and easier with practice. Now I'm adding more of the red tones around the eyelids and the meniscus area. And again with similar workflow, I put the full color first and then fade it with the brush. For the red color, I usually start in the main areas like the eyes, the lips, the nose, the ears. Later, I will be adding it to the whole head as well. And that's going to be either using dirt or cloud brush with very low opacity. And as I mentioned earlier, this approach is non-destructive. You can go back to the color node for the red color and change it to more saturated or more luminous, which I do all the time. As you can see, I have introduced a new node, which is a darker color. And once I have a nice color palette of multiple color nodes in the node graph, I will keep switching back and forth painting in the mask for each color node and bring the skin color to the level I want. It is very normal to go back to the previous node and paint in the mask again to make all the colors work together. Next, I will add the cavity map I generated in ZBrush, which will dramatically improve the look. I usually lay it on top of the base skin with very low opacity and play with the levels and brightness then instead of adding the cavity as a black color on top, I always add a red tint to the map to simulate the red cavity and creases on the skin. Okay, now I've added the red warmer color to the skin. It's time to incorporate the last two colors into the skin tone section. I'll be adding them both simultaneously. The first color is going to be blue and the second color is going to be yellow. These colors will be applied on top with very low opacity. I will paint in the mask as usual to control the color zones on the head. Typically, I aim for more yellow color from the top of the head down to the eyebrows and more red from the eyebrows to the tip of the nose and more blue from the tip of the nose down to the neck. Keep in mind that these are general guidelines. There are additional areas where some of these colors are present in different zones, such as the eyelids, the eye bags, the lips and the cheeks. And after working on the model for a while, I decided my cavity map is very strong in some areas. So I added a mask for the cavity map to paint out some of these areas. This is optional. You can do that procedurally if you want, which I'll show you how to do that in the next step. 
I added one of the utility maps that comes with the Texture XYZ head and painted out most of the map to leave only the fractals and the blemishes. Let's have a look on how to create fractals and blemishes using the procedural approach. Simply create a cloud node, set the scale value to very small value depending on the scale of your model, add a level node in the input level, crank up the black values almost to the middle and bring down the white values. The goal is to achieve a very contrasty look. Change the black color in the cloud node to the color you like. I usually change it to peachy color or dark brown. And then I add a color balance node to add a tint to the fractals and give them more of reddish and brownish look. And from here, it's the usual workflow. In this case, I added a white mask to reveal the end result of the cloud noise. And then using a black color in the brush and started painting out the fractals from the head where I don't want them to show up. So at this stage, I avoid adding more color nodes. I usually add contrast, saturation, HSV, and brightness nodes, and add a mask to control the intensity of these nodes on the model. And of course, the brightness or the contrast is going to affect all colors. I usually go back and update one of the masks for one of the colors. And of course, while doing this process, I always keep an eye on the references I have on the other monitor. And at this stage, I tend to switch between the soft brushes and some other brushes that has more organic shapes. And when you paint in the mask with organic brushes, it will add extra realism to the skin, especially in certain areas on the model. Okay, so it's time to texture the teeth, the gums, the eyes. But before that, I'm gonna set up the Mari template so everything looks clean and organized. And the way I go about it is by creating a backdrop for each of the teeth, the gums, and the eyes. And then add a teleport broadcast node to each backdrop and assemble them at the end of the line in the skin color. And this approach will allow me to connect all of these backdrops to the color map while maintaining a very organized and readable nodograph. And also these backdrops will be available to be received by other maps such as displacement, spec, rough, etc. Similar to the mesh maps and ID maps I created earlier. After adding the base color for the gums, I received the displacement map I created in ZBrush and then played with the levels and the contrast and layered it on top of the base color to simulate the deep red creases in the gums. And then I created two cloud nodes. The first one has smaller scale and the second one has mid to large scale. And then I added level nodes and color correct nodes. And then I changed the mode to screen in the merge node. And then I played with the amount to control the opacity of the cloud on the gums. The objective here is to create multiple color breakup in the gums texture. So for the teeth, I wanted to start by painting the black map, which is the color you see at the base and in between the teeth. And I used the same workflow. I started from a base color, then I layered a darker version of the same color on top. And with the mask and a combination of soft and hard brushes, I started painting around the base of the teeth. And then I use a tile texture from my texture library by creating a tiled node and layered over the painted color. And then I added black masks to hide it. And then I started painting randomly on the teeth, but mainly focusing on the bottom of the teeth. And to add color variation to the teeth, I added a color balance node and then shifted the black map to dark brown color. And then I went back to the gums to give it another quick pass adding more saturation around the base of the teeth and the crease area between the lips and the gums. Now I'm done with the color map for the head. I started creating the roughness map next. I started by receiving the ZBrush displacement and then I inverted the map because I wanted the creases to be rougher than the rest of the surface. And then I layered the ZBrush cavity map on top, followed by the R channel from XYZ displacement. And with this approach, the cavity in the roughness map will match my displacement map in render time. And then I added two level nodes, one to darken the roughness map and the other one to brighten the map a little bit more. I started painting in the mask for the dark version to add the oily regions on the head and painting in the mask for the bright version to simulate the rough areas on the head. And I took the same approach I use in the skin color. I used the teleport receiver to assemble the gums and the teeth at the end of the pipe and the roughness map back a drop. And once you receive a color map in a roughness or a bump or displacement, you can start by desaturating the map and you can start by playing with levels, brightness, contrast, grade nodes to achieve the look you're after. And when it comes to skin roughness, 
I usually avoid creating a very contrasty roughness map. And this is going to be my first pass roughness map. I always add color correct nodes in look depth to control the map in render time. For the eyes, I use the ramp I created in Maya as a reference to paint the base color for the Scalera. And similar to the skin, I created two base colors with a mask with saturated red, and I painted around the bulge of the cornea. Then with a hard brush that has slight soft edges, I placed a gray circle around the bulge of the cornea to simulate the grayish circle around the iris, and then dropped down the opacity to very low values. And to add veins and blood vessels around the corners of the eyes, I used black and white veins and thunder alpha maps and projected in the mask to artistically place them around the eye. Even though I was 100% sure I won't see the eye from the inside, I still projected the veins to cover the front half of the cornea just in case. And then I added a color balance node and I kept playing with the saturation and luminous values till I was happy with the color values for this camera. And finally, to mimic the cloudy look in the eye and also to add more color breakup, I added a cloud node in overlay mode with relatively low opacity. For the iris, I started by adding the displacement map I created in ZBrush to the base color. And I started introducing color variations to the iris based on references I have on my other monitor. You can project any iris image you can find online or if you have one already. But I wanted to use the displacement map as a base to paint in the iris pockets. This way, the color map will match the displaced geometry in render time and the colors will sit perfectly to match the peaks and valleys on the displaced mesh when it's rendered. And the faded black edges will help in creating the soft edge around the iris in Arnold. And as I mentioned earlier, I am using the ramp ID I created in Maya as a reference while painting. And now to the final tweaks on the color map before texturing the suit. At this stage, all of these tweaks are going to be procedural nodes. First, I wanted to add dark spots on the skin to mimic the leper spots effect you see on the skin. So I created a tiled node with a tiled texture and masked out the map and used a level node to crank up the values. And then I painted the mask to control where I want the spots to show up on the face and the head in general. And as you might have guessed already, I keep lots of images on the side as reference to speed up the decision making for determining the scale and location of the spots on the head. And the next thing I wanted to add is random dark freckles and blemishes on the head. So I used the same technique I used in creating the liver spots with different procedural map and then painted out in the mask to remove the freckles from the unwanted areas. And towards the end, I added a color balance node to give the freckles a darker brownish tint. And that's pretty much it for painting and creating the texture maps for the head. Let's dive into texturing the suit next. For texturing the suit, I started by baking the mesh maps first using the low and high resolution geometries I imported earlier, and then added a teleport broadcaster to each mesh map. Then right from the beginning, I started creating masks for each part of the suit as mask IDs, and also added teleport broadcaster to each ID. And then for the color map, I started from one color first and then connected teleport broadcaster, which will be received via teleport receiver in the color channel. And with a similar approach to the skin, I created two colors and I used one of the mask IDs I created earlier for the golden pieces to separate the colors for the suit. And right from the beginning, I added the cavity map I generated in ZBrush on top and then played with the levels and the multiply amount in the merge node to bring it closer to the original color of the suit. So from here, I will be creating different procedural masks, which is basically receiving all of the mask IDs I painted earlier and layering cloud noise on top of them. And that will help in breaking the CG look in the curvature map. In each mask, you can daisy chain as many cloud nodes as you want. I usually use between two to three pair mask. First cloud node would be with large scale and the second with mid scale. And the third one would be with small scale and that's if required. And once you combine all of them in one mask and play with the intensity, you will create a very decent breakup on top of the curvature map. And you are not limited to cloud node, by the way. You can use other procedural nodes in Mari, such as Berlin or Turbulence. You can also use tiled or triplanar nodes with tileable texture map, which is very common practice in Mari. 
Next, I'm adding the ambient occlusion to the suit with very low opacity. And then I use the patches ID mask I painted earlier to add more color variations to the suit. And before I move on further with my texture map, I painted the patterns map, which is basically using the patches ID mask I created earlier with procedural tiled texture maps. This is a very important map in my workflow. I use it in the bump, roughness, and color, and displacement. So just like the mesh maps and mask IDs, I wanted to paint it first so I can integrate it with the other maps such as the color, roughness, or displacement. And after layering the patterns map on top of the color map, as a final touch, I wanted to add a cloud node to add a final color breakup on the color map. And I connected the patterns map to the roughness and bump in the Arnold shader my review port. And what we're looking at is the final texture for the suit. The next step is the look depth. So I will jump in Maya and Arnold and start building the shaders for the skin and the suit. In a previous chapter, I created one shader for the whole character minus the Scalera, which was very sufficient for modeling turntable. Pretty standard practice even in VFX houses. However, in look depth, I will create an AI standard surface for geometries that share the same physical characteristics. So I created one material with default values, which is 0.18 for the diffuse and 0.5 for the roughness. I'm working in ACCG by the way. Then I duplicated then renamed the material to assign it to the new geometry. So I created a material for each of the skin, teeth, the gums and the tongue, the sclera, the iris, and separate material for each of the suit and the golden pieces. Keeping in mind there's a shared map with all of these materials, which is zebra's displacement map. So I connected the same map to all of these materials to avoid loading the same map multiple times into the memory. And then I imported all my texture maps from Mari and connected the maps to each material. Similar to ZBrush displacement, I avoid reloading shared maps multiple times into the memory. It is very good practice to learn how to optimize the render time, not only by settings, but also by being aware of the amount of data we are uploading into the memory. And now I'm adding XYZ displacement and I'm splitting the RGB channels by using Arnold layer RGBA and I'll be using the XYZ displacement only in the head material. And after I connect all of the maps, I take a quick render to see how the maps looks like. And after the diffuse pass, I enable the SSS and keep tweaking the values for the radius. The subsurface values vary from one model to another. It all comes down to the scale of the model. And at this stage, it's a matter of adding AI color correct or AI range nodes, then tweak the saturation, contrast, or exposure. They might be going back and forth between Mari and Maya to update the textures. But at this stage, I pretty much solved the problem in look depth. Unless it is a major update, then I go back and tweak the textures in Mari. And I was pretty much happy with the patterns map I created in Mari for the suit. I layered the map in render time as well on top of the roughness and the displacement map. So the last two maps I want to create in Mari are the makeup and the face paint maps. I added the file node to the shader already while looked having the skin, but I haven't plugged anything into it yet, so it's time to paint the maps and see how it looks. The makeup map is basically a mask around the eyes to show where I want the material to show up on the face. It is a pretty straightforward ID mask, but it is very useful in render time. And unlike the color maps, both makeup and face paint maps are black and white raw files. And at this stage, I keep testing the map in render time with multiple light rigs. And I think I'm happy with the map at this stage, so I'll move on and work on the face paint next. For the face paint, I started by projecting a tile texture map with alpha channel, and I initially created this map in Photoshop. My intention was to design a pattern on the character's face that symbolizes both geometry and technology, giving the impression that he is from another planet. So I decided to use hexagon shape in art direct the placement and scale in Mari. And honestly at this stage I didn't care much for the color. I knew I wanted to control the face paint completely in look dev. So at this stage I'm shifting my focus completely to designing the pattern on the head and the chin. I will deal with the colors and fancy materials later. So I wanted the shapes in the middle to be more solid and the ones at the edges to be a bit faded. However, I didn't want to use the simple gradient from the edge to the center technique, so I painted the shapes at the edges more darker and faded them to opaque towards the middle. And to make the design more interesting, I started by painting even more darker hexagons with random light ones, but keeping all the variations toward the edges. 
and then I went back and played with the overall opacity to get the final look for the mask. And back in Maya, I layered a new material on top of the skin shader. I used the mask I painted in Mari in the mix port to control the opacity of the material. I started with a gold preset first just to outline the direction of the color I was going for. Then I plugged a couple of noise and AI range into the color and roughness maps to get the desired material look. And that was the last map and material I added to the skin before the look dev turntable. So at this stage, I'm happy with the final look dev. I'll fire up a turntable render and come back when the render is done. All right, so here's the final turntable. I think I will pull the plug and call it done. There are always more tweaks we can add, but I will save it for the next tutorial. So with that, we are at the end of chapter two, which brings us to the end of making of Creature Zorak. I know both chapters are on the long side and there was a lot to cover, but I wanted to share as much as I could in both chapters. Once again, thank you for joining me today. I appreciate your time and support and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care.